Oh, hello there. I didn't see you come in. I'm Shane O'Hare of the Geekscape Games Podcast, the number one video game podcast on the Geekscape.network. Join myself, Derek Krenevelt, and a guest every fortnight as we discuss video game news, video game reviews, and dissections. That's Geekscape Games every two weeks on Geekscape.net. Christmas, Matt. Merry Christmas. We're covering an A24 film, so I think you tell this out of order or some shit. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. That's Listen, <laughs> I will tell you that I didn't know what to expect. I also don't know why I thought... <laughs> I knew this was an A24 movie, but somehow I also got it in my brain that it was from the same director as The Witch and The Lighthouse. Oh, no. Robert um, Eggers? Well, he's got Northmen coming out. He's so got the Northmen. It because that's... it's, because it's, it's kind of similar in tone yeah, to medieval was... Viking shit. But like when this was out in theaters, I thought that. Like, oh, for the longest okay. time, I was like, oh, yeah, it's from, it's the next thing from The Lighthouse guy. No, it's from the guy who did the live action Pete's Dragon. But, <laughs> but you know what? I'm I'm just gonna play my card right now. I had fun, dude. I and, love this movie. And I, when you were like, we're gonna talk about Green Knight, I was like, this Scream Five loving motherfucker. <laughs> here. And then I started watching. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is Christmas as fuck. Yeah, like, this, yeah. This is, this yeah. Is, like, I would say 98 percent of this movie takes place in or around Christmas yep. time. 100. percent It's a Christmas game. Yeah. Um it takes place shit. It's like the it's like the rent of medieval movies. We start on Christmas and we end on Christmas. Yeah, there we go. So, <laughs> but but there's also very little middle. It's, very little middle. It's it's like you start with Christmas for about 20 minutes. You get a solid 10 minutes of the year <laughs> in between of him and, shitting his pants. <laughs> and then and then it's just like, all right, well, now you got to do your Christmas quest. Like, yeah, do your thing. Yeah. And and I really do. I, it's it's one of those ones where it's like it's tough to talk about because it's um, I think this with a lot of fantasy films, honestly, mm-hmm. there's like, here's what the central theme is. OK, yep. got it. But then when you're trying to describe it, it's a lot of like and then this happened. Like, yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's like a very visual medium. Like, 100 yes. percent. Like, it's not it's not like there's these like deep conversations or big plot points. It's just that you're on this journey with this guy. So, I mean, you pick this. How about you walk us through? I mean, I feel like you could sum up what this movie walks us through in like. Yeah, 100 percent. So this movie is a an adaptation of the 14th century poem, uh, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. And basically the story goes is. One of King Arthur's knights, they're they're all hanging out and uh, the mythical green knight comes in and lays down a challenge. And the challenge is uh, or it's more of a game. It's not really a challenge. It's more of a game. And he says, I will allow one of you to lay any strike upon me. But in one year, I'm going to return and lay that same strike upon you. Right. So. In this adaptation, we have King Arthur, who is, uh, he's getting up there. He's getting close to death. And he's like, all right, do any of you want to partake? And all of his knights are like, no, fuck that, fam. Well, there is one knight, uh, Sir Gawain, who, uh, he wants fame. Like, more than anything, he wants fame. He wants to be known as that gallant hero. Yeah. And... The problem is, is that Sir Gawain is, I don't think it's played up that much, but he's kind of a coward. 
Like, yes, he, he's cool. very much so a coward. And he's like, you know what? This is my moment. This is this is what I can do. So he takes the sword. And I, I do think ultimately it was a test. They don't really get into it, but it's a test, right? Like you're saying I you are open to strike me in any way. OK, to yeah, earn. Why would axe. you go for? Why would you go for the fucking head? Yeah. yeah. If, if you know this guy's coming back and this guy is like three times the size of you like and and that's what happens. Uh, Sir Gowan cuts his head off and everyone's cheering and they're calling him a hero. Well, the knight's body stands back up. He picks the head up and starts laughing. And he just says in in one year, basically. So throughout that entire year, and I love the way they did this in the movie, his story is sweeping across the kingdom. Yeah. Like he, he has become this famous knight for what he did. And I love the, the I think it was a puppet show. Yeah. The, the I, it, show I didn't write so any fun. notes down for either thing that we recorded. Yeah. Uh, except for love the puppet show. The puppet like, show was awesome because the puppet show, the way they're doing this is as the time is going throughout the year they're showing more and more moments of the puppet show and when it gets to the end of that puppet show and it gets to the end of his full year they show in the puppet show that the green knight just stands up and fucking decapitates the sir gowan puppet and it's basically showing that he's he's scared he's scared yeah. everybody's praising him but he is scared he's just filled with anxiety who is it that says just don't fucking go? Is it the the, I think the it's girl the, that he likes? The girl, the girl that he likes. Yeah, because this is a very like all things considered pretty small cast as well. Yes, like, it's a super small cast, and we are giving you the like cliff notes. Of you should it. watch as, the movie. Yeah, honestly, you should movie. watch the movie. <laughs> um, I will warn you: the way this movie was advertised, it was advertised way more Lord of the Rings than it turns out to be. It is a slower burn. For sure, um, it's it's a twenty four. There's a it's it is one hundred percent a visual masterpiece, but there's not a lot of action per se. There are good, there are great moments, there are magical moments, but there's not there's not going to be a Lego set of the Green Knight coming out. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe one day. Who I mean, I don't think there will be an official Lego set. It'll get it, a twenty four following. Too. People love it, yeah. and then, you know. I think yeah. I think this movie was advertised as more actiony than than it was, and then I think is. that's no, I the agree. I think that's the issue some people had with it. I think this movie was very split between uh, loved and disliked. I don't think anyone actively hated it, but I think the criticisms I heard from people were that they were kind of bored with it. And yeah. I think that kind of you can chalk that up to the advertising because it advertised it as very medieval fantasy where it is that. But it's it's medieval fantasy through an A24 lens lens. And honestly. I also think that it's, it's yeah, it's medieval fantasy, but it's it's more about, you know, like I love those 80s movies like Kroll. Right. Where yeah. characters are like on a journey and all things considered, like Kroll isn't as actiony as no. you remember it being yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like it's like, oh, but Kroll has like such a wide cast of characters that it feels like it's moving quicker than it actually is. Yeah. And I think that that's when you have basically for most of the movie, just a guy by himself. And then for other parts, a guy with a CGI talking fox <laughs> like it's going to feel awkward. But I think it's gorgeous. Like I was yeah, like just 100%. watching I'm like God, so much of this movie is just so fucking pretty. Yep. Um, but it does kind of suffer the downside of like. I think that the Green Knight would be just as compelling to me if it was a 30 minute short. Yeah, that was like the first 20 minutes up till that puppet show. And then the last like 15 minutes when he confronts the green knight. Like, I know that you need like a couple of these other pieces, but like the, you know, we'll jump to the ending. Cause but essentially he just meets people along the way. Yep. And at one point he's given this, uh, I'm trying to think what they describe it as, but it, it basically was like, as long as you wear this, the green knight can do, you yes, no harm. Yes. Right. It was like a ribbon or a belt. Yeah, and it was like he has this whole fantasy where he keeps that on and he goes and he becomes the king and his 
girl that he's crushing on births him a son, but then he steals the son and marries a noble woman so that he can be royalty and like all this crazy stuff. But then as soon as he takes off that garb, uh, similar to the green ribbon story that, you know, from like scary stories, his head falls off. And even though he could live a long life up until that point, he finally is brave for the first time in just accepting his fate that it is now time for him to die. Yep. And I, and I think that that is really beautiful and that's really powerful. And it kind of sucks to say that I didn't really need the hour in the middle of the movie to get me yeah. to that same emotional beat, but that doesn't make it not fun. It's just kind of a lot of f- beautiful yes. filler. Very much <laughs> so. Very much so. Like it would reach the same end goal, but I wouldn't have been as fascinated with it if you removed a lot yes. of that mid stuff because it is it is it's a journey and i feel like we don't get enough movies that are journeys anymore and i i love this i love this setting i love the way it was shot we brought this up last week the bells and just this is a very <laughs> as much as there's not a lot of uh christmas iconography i yeah. would say lighting and sound design was very christmasy yeah Um, and i mean it it is but like i said it is christmas and it's christmas (laughs) like it's it takes place at christmas i'm trying to think what else this guy had done he's working oh damn he's working on a movie that's coming out this year called peter pan and wendy looks like it's his attempt at a live action version of peter pan um, oh shit! Featuring the- <laughs> featuring Alan Tudyk and Jim Gaffigan and Jude Law. Sign me the fuck up. <laughs> That's weird, but all right, I'm in. Let's do it. I mean, it's uh, it's 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 Disney doing another live action one. So, well, well, I mean, I, <laughs> this does need to be mentioned. Okay, what? I am so on board. J- Jude Law is playing Captain Hook and Jim okay. Gaffigan is playing Mr. Smee, which is like the best casting I okay. can possibly imagine. Okay. I, I don't think I've seen. I think the only live action Disney one I've seen is Jungle Book. I have mixed feelings on all of them, but I'm such a Disney nerd that I'll watch every one of them when they come out. So I saw yeah. Lion King. I saw Aladdin. I saw yeah. the Dumbo one from Tim Burton. Like, oh, I did see the Dumbo one. I did see the fun. Dumbo one. It was okay. It was all right. Yeah. I think my... that's all they are. They're serviceably okay. <laughs> like... Well, that's my thing with like, I saw the cast for the Lion King and I was like, oh, fuck. And then I yeah. saw the reviews for the Lion King and I'm like, I'm not going to watch that. Like, I just, I, I was really, I, you know, you know me and it's, Glover, it's dude. It's not, you know it me is. and Donald. So it's, I don't, it's not his, I'll, here's what I'll say about the Lion King. Yeah. It's not as love bad. It's not as bad as the reviews say, but it's still not as good as you want it to be. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. I do remember hearing like some of the songs. Yeah. The only reason to watch the live action Lion King, honestly, is for the Timon and Pumbaa. Yeah. I saw some of the clips of the Seth Rogen and, uh, Billy, Billy, they they are like they have a very good chemistry with good. those voices. And I think good. they continued the trend that happened with the animated one as well, where they did all their scenes together so that they could like good, 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 good. improvise versus like, you know, for those of you who don't know, when you're doing voice acting, usually like if Dylan and I were going to be in a cartoon, Dylan would just record all of his lines. And then at a yeah. later date, I would record all of my lines and po- some poor editor would have to make it seem like we were hanging out together, recording our conversation. Yeah. Also, shout out John Oliver, because he was uh, Zazu. <laughs> he, and uh, he just fucking threatened the con- Congress. to. Yeah, he did. Oh, that was some good shit. <laughs> info. That was amazing. I love John Oliver. I agree. All right. Well. He's, a, Dylan, he's an American you. treasure. <laughs> he is. He's, in a, he's a British American treasure for sure. Yeah. But but Green Knight, dude, I'm really glad you enjoyed it because I did. I was worried that we were going to go into this and you were going to be like, the Jesus Christ. Like, no, like, I, what was that shit? Because I know some people do. And I know that we're reaching a point where people are turning their backs on A24 as a whole. But I'm still all in, even though I, I know a lot of people liked The Lighthouse. I did not. I see in the lighthouse. I haven't turned my back on a 24, the lighthouse. Here's my thing with a 24, which is going to make you even more confused, but like a 24, I feel like in general has made mostly movies that I've really liked, but never want to rewatch. Yeah. We've talked about that, but I, the lighthouse is probably the one I've rewatched the most really because like 
I I appreciate the lighthouse from a filmmaking standpoint. I think it's a really artistic achievement. Okay, that I they agree like with that. basically shot this movie with like cameras from the twenties. Like, yeah, that's insane. Like, it's it's shot like more than any other film that tried to feel like a lost film from that time period. It feels the most authentically. Is it fair to say that I respect that and I appreciate that? I just don't think it's a good movie. I think that's fair. Okay. I, I just really, I was like, I like the performances. I think it's funny. I like quoting it. It's like a dumb, goofy film that gets real wild. It showed me yeah, a mermaid no. vagina, which was the thing yes. I didn't think I was ever yep. going to see in my life. I actually think that the ending unsettled me more than almost any other film at that time. Okay. Um, except for that. like maybe like hereditary, like yeah. hereditary fucked my shit up and I was like rules. I will never watch hereditary again. And it is probably really? the most five star movie that I just cannot emotionally yeah. handle watching a second time. <laughs> it might be different to watch in my living room, but like <laughs> watching it opening night in a the theater, I was so fucking stressed out from start to finish yeah. That I was just like, I don't ever want to feel these feelings again. I want to rewatch that. <laughs> it's midsummer, been a while. I could rewatch. Oh, like I midsummer, love I was midsummer. like, but, I, I want to buy the like they did like a director's cut. Yeah, on the I just fourth night that I really want to pick up. Midsummer didn't put me through the anguish that I was feeling during Hereditary. Like Hereditary, no. I remember when we did that was back when theaters were normal to go to. Yeah. And we did it as an in theaters now for horror movie night. And oh, I remember shit. Brian, Scott, and I all had the same thing happen to us, which was that we stressed ourselves out so much watching the movie that we had migraines when we left the theater and all had to take naps afterwards. Damn, that's fucking and I was like, dude, the power kind of, of a movie to do that to cool three experience. different people yeah, to, in three different states is wild. Um, I have, uh, <laughs> to wrap this up, because I know you got to roll out of here shortly. Roll um, out. <laughs> I love A24. I love The Green Knight. Highly recommend it to anyone to watch. Really looking forward to The Northman that's coming out uh, at the end of this month, I believe. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for that. I really like The Witch. So um, I know he Robert Eggers is also the one that did the lighthouse, which I really appreciate. And maybe one day I'll give it another watch and we'll see where it goes from there. But um, I'll always give an A24 movie a chance. And if A24 wants to tackle Christmas again, I'm all for it. Yeah, no, 100 percent. Man, I don't know if I'm looking at the I was trying to see. Oh, that's why I was like, what movies did they have coming out in 2022? And apparently they put their films on a separate thing. So oh, I'm like, really? I haven't heard of any of this shit. And it was like TV shows that they produced in the past. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? How am I going to? Oh, man. A I forgot that A24 is doing the Marcel the Shell with Shoes On movie. I forgot about that, too. Did you see X? I, I know I need to see X. Oh, and it's so good. We, I'm it. not going to talk about it then because yeah. it, it's really good. Oh, I need to see uh, everything everywhere all at once, too. Dude. Dude and there's then so I found out, fucking many. <laughs> I know. Well, it's like that's the thing is, is now like. After three, two years of like none of that shit being available, now it's like the the fucking doors are off, and it's like oh they're all coming out now. Like the floodgates yeah. are open. I would what I know. I'm not one for jumping on to more uh, like streaming services, but I would 100 percent support an A24 streaming service. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. All right, we should go. Yeah, yeah, you got to roll <laughs> out, man. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Hey, do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Or do you have an already existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Well, check out WeKnowPodcasting.com. From concept development to theme music to editing to logos, WeKnowPodcasting.com is a one-stop shop for all things pod. Don't hesitate to hit us up. We're very nice. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.